Hey guys, what's up? Austin here. And this will be my fourth fucking time trying to record this bullshit. Because my past microphone was messing up. And now I've actually figured out a way to get my Turtle Beach to work on here. So hopefully I'll sound a lot better. Um, We're starting off things here on the the uh, first new level, Awakening Wood. And we're going to start things off just amazing. <laughs> With with dialogue from our infernal ship from hell oh and by the way this this is post commentary because originally when i recorded this it it messed my audio was messing up and i tried to do post commentary twice and both times they messed up so i tried tried to get my turtle beach to work on my computer and i eventually got it to work so that's a good thing uh the first thing I do here is uh, I try to get my red Pikmin numbers up because 28 is, is not going to be enough. Uh, dwarf bulb orbs, you know, they're really easy to take out. Red bulb orbs are uh, fucking still easy to take out. Oh, man. I, I have not gotten sleep in a while. And I have school in like four days, so I'm screwed when it comes to my sleep schedule. Uh, but you're not going to miss much. All you're going to really see is... The, these ball wars being carried back, so I'm just gonna skip ahead. All right, and we're back, and we have 30 new little buddies joining our little escapade. Uh, whenever you see gra uh, patches of grass like this, it's probably a good idea, especially if you have leaf pikmin, to pick it because this nectar right here, if your pikmin drink it, they will be upgraded to flower pikmin. Flower pikmin uh, run a lot faster and attack with more power. Uh, I guess since this game is actually considered an RTS, uh, I guess you could say this is the equivalent to having a major in RTS genres. Unlike RTS, uh, most RTSs, you can um, your Pikmin can actually be downgraded. Uh, usually, downgrading comes from being shaken off of enemies that they're attacking, <clears throat> and. Yes, picking picking grass for no reason. They really love that fucking grass. Anyway, we run into the most harmless enemy in the game, the female shear grub. They really do nothing more than just annoy you with their little ticking noise. And we have a strawberry. I'm not a big fan of strawberries. I don't know why. I just don't really like strawberries. I have a lot of friends and family that like strawberries. I I'm just not a big fan of strawberries. It uh, they're just... Eh, I don't know. I, I hate the seeds. Speaking of seeds, uh, now I really don't want a strawberry. And what's this? Already one tenth of the way done with the game? Jesus, this game is short. Yeah, this game isn't very long. Um, these uh, these plants right here that you see. They um, they produce a uh, oh real quick that right there that enemy that's a honey wisp. Um, if you drop make it drop its egg, it'll give you nectar. Sometimes. Anyway, these flowers uh, the uh, these is what gives you the sprays in the game. These are red berries and they give you the ultra spicy spray. Uh, the other the purple berries give you ultra bitter spray. I will not be collecting any sprays because as I promised, this is a no spray run as well as well as a no purple pikmin run so sorry about that god damn that took a long time shit that usually doesn't take that long when you have a hundred pikmin uh new enemy very harm uh, not very threatening can only eat one pikmin at a time just swarm its face uh, it actually got one but because uh we killed it before it actually swallowed the pikmin we saved it Another new enemy. Watch out for the dandelions that have eyes. Uh, keep forgetting the names of these enemies. But, um... Embarrassing enough, first Pikmin death. Yeah, one of the most... By one of the most pathetic enemies in the game. If you make it miss its attack, it'll do this. Smack itself in the stomach and fall over. That's a good cue to attack it. Um... That right there, shaking off the Pikmin. Like it just did. That, uh, that is what can make their flowers revert to leaves. I think one actually does get deflowered. Uh, yeah, you could barely see the little petal come off of it. Ve very, very pathetic enemy. Not very threatening at all. 
I think uh, if you carry that corpse back, it gives you like 15 pigment or something. I don't know. <clears throat> oh shit! What's this? A new cave? Get ready for dialogue. Yeah, get used to this. Every time we run into a new cave, this asshole is gonna say something. Flame resistant pigment. Yeah, this is the first cave to actually feature a hazard, and that's fire. Thankfully, red pigment are immune to fire. Your captains, however, are not. So, you know, through the fire and the flames, you will not carry on. God, that was a horrible joke. Ugh. <clears throat> uh, not really much to say about this cave. It's it's pretty straightforward. Uh, on this first, there's five floors on it. On this first floor, there's only one treasure. Uh, but we will run into a new enemy, and it's not that asshole. Mm. Sorry for the lack of commentary. I'm kind of tired, and there's not really much to say. Where is it? There it is. Male shear grubs. A little more threatening. Not really though. Uh, these can actually eat Pikmin, but it can only eat one at a time. And Pikmin 1, uh, male shear grubs were a big issue because frickin' they could, um, a male shear grub, if it caught a, uh, Pikmin in its vice grip, no matter what, it would always eat the Pikmin, even if you took out all of its health. And they thankfully fixed that little, that little feature there that they had in this game because... Uh, you pr it was almost impossible to not lose a Pikmin to a male shear grub. <laughs> Blue light in the background. A D-pad. How fucking amazing. Stones. Man, apparently these guys don't know what plastic is. Uh. Oh, what do you know? This floor looks exactly the fucking same. Uh, this second floor, there's actually no treasures. This is, um, I guess you could consider this a rest level, even though, even though you're not really resting because, uh, there's not really a geyser. Uh, there's, uh, violet candy pop buds, uh, for people who are trying to actually get purple Pikmin. And I do, I do not utilize the violet candy pop buds because... Time and time again, I'm not going to be using purple Pikmin unless it's in necessary situations. Uh, a new enemy, right? Not, not there. Where the hell is it? A uh, very annoying enemy coming up here in a second. <laughs> yeah, when I actually I, I run into it. Uh, here it is. Some eggs will contain these assholes. These are called Matites. Uh, the Pikmin do not like the smell of Matites, and they make them run frantically around. Uh, it can be troublesome, especially if there's hazards nearby. If you kill a Matite, it'll drop nectar. Purple Pikmin can kill multiple Matites in one throw, so you they'll uh, you can get a lot of nectar from Matites by throwing Purple Pikmin. Excuse me for all the cutting, but you really didn't miss much on that level. There's absolutely nothing there. Uh, we actually run into the hazard for once. This is fire. Uh, fire completely harmless to Red Pikmin. Um. If a, if a non-red Pikmin gets caught on fire, you can save it by simply blowing your whistle. In Pikmin 1, it was very hard to save your Pikmin from fire. Half the time, they would freaking die. Because they run around like a chicken, like a chicken with head chopped off. And a floppy disk. But this isn't any ordinary floppy disk. And, and, and I just love that. Listen to that little jingle. I love games that kind of have a dynamic soundtrack to them. Um, in this case, this little jingle plays whenever you carry back a treasure. Um, I don't know, I always like dynamic soundtracks. Left 4 Dead has a really good dynamic soundtrack. <sighs> and I really wish I could read Japanese so I could actually figure out what game this is, but this is actually a, a Famicom disc. Famicom was the basically the Japanese version of an NES. Not really big difference, except the only difference is that the Famicom ran on uh, floppy disks rather than um, cartridges. So, yeah. And and this next treasure coming up, like, 
I, I, I don't know. Can, can somebody please tell me what the hell this thing is? What is this? I mean, obviously it's a Strife monolith. Has something to do with Final Fantasy if it's called Strife. God, what's with me in the bad jokes? Yeah, this is the final floor that's going to be covered. Um, yeah. Uh, anyway, like I was saying, apologize for all the I apologize for all the skippings, but freaking, you're not really missing much when I skip around. You know. Plus, I'm kind of irritated at this episode for I have to record this four freaking times, and yeah, I forgot about these dickheads. If that bull boar was any closer, those mentites might have been a little bit of a threat, but thankfully they weren't. Um, fun fact, the layout of dungeons are always randomized. Uh, right here, I actually got pretty lucky. Uh, right here, the, uh, there was one treasure right next to a, uh, violet candy pop bud that was right next to a bulb orb that actually contains a treasure. If I, if I went through this dungeon again, uh, I might not have got the same result again. Uh, it, that's just how the game works, it's completely randomized. <coughs> Eh, I feel like being an asshole, so you guys get to suffer watching these Pikmin carry shit back. And all these glow caps. I really want to see a fungus that glows. That, uh, I don't, I've never heard about fungi that glow. And I'm not even going to mention the fact that Nintendo was a card company in the 1800s. That should be pretty much common knowledge by now. Look away for. You know, I've never actually played a game and watch. Eh, very simple games. You know, kind of wish I had a game and watch. I bet those things are fun as shit. Holy shit, final floor! What the fuck is that in the background? All oh, too bad you don't get to see the boss fight. Uh, I'll cover that in the next episode. So again, sorry about all the skipping and sorry about the post commentary, but hopefully that won't be an issue next time. So I'll see you guys later. Have fun.